Konnichiwa. We are the U.S. Taito Association. We perform uh, both Saturday and Sundays at Japan Fest. So if, you're, if you've been to Japan Fest before, there's a good chance you've seen us. Unfortunately, this year, due to COVID, we're not able to all get together at the uh, Gwinnett Center. So we're going to try to, using the internet, still bring you a little piece of Japanese culture today. This is my father, Mitsunobu Uchida. He's the seventh degree black belt. He's the highest ranking black belt teaching our style outside of Japan. So he started in Atlanta in 1975 and he's been working continuously and taught thousands and thousands of Georgians Taito over the years. One of the things that makes Taito unique is that even though it's traditional Okinawan karate created by an Okinawan karate master, he was a very forward thinker and he thought that Karate's movement was too static and uh, very two-dimensional. So he wanted to add bigger techniques, flying techniques, gymnastic techniques. So first, today we have three of our students with us to demonstrate. We have Connor Kenworthy, Oof. Ellie Wallach, Oof. and Isaac Kaufman. Oof. And we're gonna begin our little demonstration today showing you some of our advanced gymnastics techniques. So that we don't just get up here and do like a backflip or something. Everything has a meaning and a purpose. So you will see how they do gymnastics and combine it with different attacks. Korekara America Taido Kyokai no Enbu o hajimemasu. Front roll with a back kick. Yeah. Yeah. Front roll with jump spinning heel kick. Yeah. Yeah. That's front roll with the half moon strike. All of these names are actually, it's funny to say them in English because in the dojo, we don't use English talking about the names. So that last one is actually called Zenten Hangetsate. That's Toby Zenten, the diving roll. Yeah. Yeah. That was a cartwheel front hand spring front roll combination. Yeah. Yeah. That's round off back tuck. You can see he's starting in the stance and finishing in the stance. Yeah. That's an aerial, no-handed cartwheel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's very difficult. We call that the elevator. That's back roll to back handspring to back tuck. Yeah. Very nice body control with the multiple walkovers. Yeah. One, two, three. So this is an example of some of the training we do. And if you go to YouTube and you look up Taito and the word Jisen, J-I-S-S-E-N, that's the word we use for sparring, you will see people in the middle of a sparring match using front rolls, back rolls, cartwheels, even handsprings and flips to attack their opponent. So next we will show you this is a, in karate they say kata, but in taido we say hoke. Hoke means the law of the movement. So if you write kata in Japanese, it means form. If you write hoke in Japanese, it means the law of the form. So it's very, very standardized. And they're going to show you untai no hoke, the hoke of the crashing wave movement.
So each time they strike, it should be like a wave striking the beach. Excellent job, guys. So that is the first movement that students learn. So by the time you reach Purple Bell, you will have this memorized and you should be pr pretty good at doing it. Okay. So in Taito, we have five whole case, five forms that you have to learn before you get to Black Belt. And that one was the easiest one. I know on the on the internet we're trying to make it uh, quick and fast and interesting, but some of the hokeis we have a hoke that they practice. It takes them about 12 to 14 minutes to complete. It's a serious serious uh, physical feat, and so uh, as your belt gets higher, the challenge grows and grows. So you see them doing a lot of you know unorthodox movements. They're going up up and down like waves. They are spinning. So using this target, we will show you some of the movements. Sentai movement, spinning and striking. Sentai kaijou geri. Sentai mawashi geri. Nandahasuke. Untai techniques, Untai Fujogeri, Shrimp Cake. Jumping up, turning around, and okay. It's very effective. Hard to anticipate how it kicks comes. Hentai technique, body axis changing. Oh, Shajogeri, Landas kick on the floor. When opponents come attack, your body side down, same time kicks comes out. Very effective techniques. Three dimensional movement. Nentai techniques. Hangetate, very unique ground up techniques. Yeah. Half moon kick. Tangetate. Yeah. Very difficult to anticipate how the kicks comes. Last one is a ten tie techniques. Use cockwheel, front load, back flips, all kinds of techniques. That's a cockwheel, so ten kicks. Yes. Very powerful striking. So to give you an idea, holding it the target, you can see it's making power. So then when I attack her, she's disappearing. So I throw the punch to her head and she goes down. 
and bang, the kick comes out back. So what happens in real time is the first attack misses and when the guy goes to adjust for his second attack, the kick arrives. So the first attack misses and then as he's going to try to change it, the kick arrives. Very unique technique. So Taito is full of these very unique movements created by Shikumene Sensei. Next, we have some board breaking. So these boards are straight from Home Depot. Uh, they haven't been baked or sun dried or deep fried or anything. They're just straight up uh, shelving wood. And uh, you will see, maybe if, if they miss it, you will see that these don't break easily. You can hit them very hard. And if you don't hit it accurately, uh, it doesn't break. So hopefully they will break them on first try. The first one, Ellie is gonna use her elbow. She does a spinning elbow strike. Sentai MP, spinning elbow strikes. Close. using the leg scissor takedown and then the chop to finish. Cockrail. Yeah. That's a very difficult technique. Yeah, when you when you strike it, you're you're actually looking at the world from an upside down angle. And so it's very difficult to get that one accurate. That was pretty good for first try. See, see. Hentai techniques. Taito's sidekick. Oh. Hentai techniques from a gymnastic moves to go right in the bowl. Flying side kick. That's a untai technique. Your body going up in the air and then coming down in the air through the technique. Flying side kick. Yeah. It was high. in the same spot, right? Good. The first try was a maybe didn't yeah, hold hit, enough. He hit the board just a little bit high, but you could it didn't break, but it knocked me off the little stand there. So lots of power coming through. So just very, very basic karate punch. Hey! Send your getting back spinning kick. Okay. 
So you see that we stand like this. And when we switch sides, our hands change. And I always tell my students, your stance is like a weapon. So even just making the stance, there should be power there. So if I just step forward into the stance you've been seeing us do, hey, yeah. So as you can see, some of these boards are pretty gnarly. And if it's not working, we are trained. Change the technique, break the board, move on to the next thing. Don't stay on it. Same technique too long. And I'm so glad Sensei is the one who didn't break it well. But my students were all perfect today. Good. Come forward. Good. Then... Isaac, to the front, a little closer. Take off your mask, they wanna see your face. Isaac, how old are you? 15. And how long have you been doing Taito? Almost nine years. Nine years, and how long have you been a black belt? Three or four years? Two? Two, two years, <laughs> two years. Ellie, come forward. Ellie, how old are you? 15. And how long have you been doing Taito? Over nine years. And how long have you been a black belt? Two years. Close. Connor forward. And Connor, how old are you? 16. And how long have you been doing Taito? Almost nine years. And how long have you been a black belt? Two years. Thank you. So these are three of our wonderful high schoolers who wanted to come in and put on a little show for y'all today. Let's give them a hand. All right. Good job. Good. We can clear out the boards and everything. So now we would like to do some, teach you something at home. So I know that at home you may not have like a nice workout floor or you may not have a, um, a lot of space. So we're gonna do something that requires very little space today. So. First, in Japan, it's very important to be able to sit and bow properly. And actually, when we have visited Japan, it's usually one of the first things Japanese senseis want to see. Do Americans really know how to sit and ray properly? So seiza is the word for how we sit down at karate. And ray is the word we use for bowing, but ray is actually doesn't mean bow. It means uh, respect, like showing respect. So first we will do seiza, and if you'd like to stand up at home, you can go along with us. Our toes are apart, but our heels are together, like Dorothy. Then, first, your toes shut together. Then, we will do our left leg so that it's a mirror, okay? So, my left is your right. Your right leg goes back, and you gently put your knee down. Then, your other leg goes back. Then, right now, my feet were like this, but when I go to sit, they will become flat and my big toes will touch each other and you sit all the way down, go. So now we are in Seiza. When you do Seiza, your hips have to be alive. So I'm gonna show you. If your hips are relaxed, your lower back will stick out if somebody attacks you at this moment, the first thing my body will do to be able to move is that. That is the first movement that happens. So when we sit at karate, we are already here, not here. 
here. So that at a moment's notice, I can take off in any direction. Then we bow. When you bow, your right hand will slide down your leg. You do not lift it into the air and then place it. Your right hand will slide down your leg. You have a line of symmetry between your knees. Your first two fingertips, not the middle of the finger, the tip of your finger will just barely touch that line of symmetry. So as I go forward, my hand slides down my leg and the first two fingers come to my line of symmetry. When my hand touches the ground, everything stops. I don't keep going down. This is improper. Then back. So when you touch the floor, you will have a pause there. And like at the end of class, we say something there, like thank you very much in Japanese. Or in the beginning of the class, we say please in Japanese. So slowly, they, hand comes down. As soon as you touch the floor, everything stops. Then back. So all of these things are standardized. Your tip of the finger coming to the line of symmetry. How much of an angle you make when you bow. So it's very hard to see the own angle of your body. The way the body works, as long as my hand slides down and as soon as I touch, I stop, I've hit the correct, correct angle. If I keep my body moving after my hand is touched, I'll have the improper angle. Your chin does not change. This space between your chin and your chest neither opens nor closes. It simply stays the same. And I can see all the floor ahead of me. I can see these two guys. I can see my father here off camera. I can see all the way to the end of the floor where it meets the wall. But we definitely do not stick our face up or pull our face in. Last one together, ready. Okay. And back. Now, when we sat down, we did our right leg first. So when we stand up, we will do our left leg first. Your bottoms come up off your feet and you step with your left. Then all the way up, feet shut. The last thing you do is toes open. So we do the whole sequence together one time. And at the, when we bow, let's say, arigato gozaimashita. That means thank you very much in Japanese, ready? One, shut the feet. Two, your right leg is behind. Three, left leg. Four, softly down and your feet are flat. Ready? We will touch and then we say, Arigato gozaimashita and back. Now we stand up, your left leg is first, bottoms up and forward step. Then the other leg forward. Finally, feet open. So we do this at the beginning and end of every class. We do Seiza, we do Rei. If it's at the beginning, we say please. If it's at the end, we say thank you and show respect to our teachers every single class. So now we're gonna do front kick. I will teach you very quickly how to front kick. Front kick is not so difficult to learn. First, you need to get into your kicking stance. Your right leg is behind you. And you can see the my back foot is actually pointing sideways. And my front foot is pointing straight at you, my opponent. So you have this 90 degree angle with your footprints. Then both knees are bent. And like a baseball player, you don't want to go knees together. Just like a baseball player, you want to be knees wide open, knees pushing apart. Then you have two hands, and beginners do what is called morote gedan. Morote means double-handed, and gedan means low. So just like the guy who walks the tightrope at the circus, you want your hands down near your waist. Anytime you pick your hands up, it makes balance more difficult. So for beginners, we start with the hands low and your kick has two basic movements. First, you need to pick your knee up high bent. Then you quickly open, close and put it back. Open, close and put it back. You don't want to do soccer style. 
where your leg doesn't bend and you're just swinging it up in the air like this. It must become bent, then kick like this. Ready. Everybody at home, you can try, ready. Bend your knee, kick and back. It's a simple snap, ready. Bend your knee, kick and back. When you kick, toes up. Try to make your ankle long and toes up. Don't do like this with, don't make like a fist with your toes. You're gonna break your toes off. Ready. Bend the knee and kick. Os. Go. Os. Now, when we kick, we are saying os. Os is a very long time used word in Japan. If you write it in kanji, os means like a total energy, total time. So basically, when you say os, you're saying, I'm giving it all my effort all the time. Ready? Go. Os. Go. Os. One more. Go. Os. Then everybody at home, we block with the letter X. We change our legs. Then your hands come back down near your waist height. Now you get to kick with your left. In karate, we do everything on both sides. Ready? Bend your knee and kick it. Os. Ready? Bend your knee and kick. Os. Bend your knee, kick. Os. You can feel it's not just your legs. If you pick your knee up high to hold it, you're really having to use your stomach muscles on that side of your body. So you're getting like a whole workout here. Ready? Go knee up high, then kick. Os. Go. Os. Go. Os. Two more. Go. Os. One more. Go. Os. Very nice. Then we come back. Hands back. Your feet shut towards me. Then your hands come down, just like when we were kicking this low double shield. Then we do toite. Toite means we are finishing. First you X, then down, then toes open. Very nice. I, so I, can, I can't see everybody at home, but of the videos I see at the top of my screen, many of y'all were kicking along with us and it looks very good. So it doesn't take a whole lot of time to master the basics. But once we start moving advanced, it starts taking a little more time to master the techniques. But it's all, all of those kicks you saw them do started when they were six years old, learning how to do the front snap kick, maegeri. In case you've been keeping notes at home, that's called maegeri. Mae is forward. And giddy is kick, my giddy, the forward kick. So now we would like to move on to our Q&A portion of the demonstration today. If you have any questions about what you saw or Taito in general or about our school, we will be happy to take some minutes to answer it. <laughs> like, yeah, somebody typed in on the chat, my giddy. Yes, I love my giddy. And I tell you, it's so interesting. It's a white belt technique. But the few times in my life when I thought I'm going to have to physically defend myself, this is one of the first things that comes to my mind. The jumping, spinning, flipping upside down, inside out kick is not high on my list. When I thought, man, this guy's going to try to hit me. I wasn't thinking about some super fancy technique where if I miss, maybe I'll lose my balance or something. The things that come to my mind are the more basic techniques front kick, front punch, roundhouse kick and the side kick, the more basic ones. If though the person had a weapon, all of these kicks we do where you duck and kick at the same time become invaluable. Because if I'm standing up and throw the kick and you stab me, you win. Doesn't matter how hard I kick you, you're gonna win that, that battle. It's a bad trade, one kick for a stab to the body. So. If you are able to, like this young lady behind me, Chirangamai, you can see where her upper body is now, 
But when she throws the kick, it'd be gay to go. Her foot is there, but her entire upper body has disappeared. So even if that kick missed, if I swung a bat or a blade at her, her whole upper body has disappeared out of the target area. So it has a wonderful application. So I am think um, our Japan Fest host, Lisa, is going to help me with the Q&A. Yes. So to get started, we do have a question from Noah. Um, with the acrobatic nature of the training, is it difficult for older adults to participate in Taito? So once you get to my age, backflips and handsprings are very difficult. But even our oldest student who is I think our oldest student right now is 66 and he can do cartwheels and back rolls and front rolls. And he can also do, uh, I don't know if y'all have ever seen judo, they do the break falling, which is like they'll do a shoulder roll and then um, catch themselves by hitting the floor and having the arm absorb the impact instead of your body. Can you do Olten and go ahead. That's a break fall. He did a shoulder roll and then slapped the floor. Even my 65, 66 year old students can do that. So they, of course they can't backflip, but uh, all of the stuff is replaceable. So if the young people in their form do a backflip, older people do back roll. So like I said, yeah, even my, you, I, I, should, I wish he, he was here today. One of our black belts, he's 66. He can do like one handed cartwheels. He's an amazing guy. So I think part of the reason he can do that is because he was in his 40s when he started Taito and he's kept it up throughout the years. And I'm here to tell you guys, gymnastics keeps you young more than almost any other exercise we do. It keeps your body limber. It keeps your, your physical movement very free. And so it's a wonderful antidote to aging. But yeah, to answer the question, that was a long answer. Sorry, I guess I could have just said old people do do gymnastics here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see. We have a question from Shayla. What are some of the major differences between Taido and Taekwondo? So like, uh, because they come from different cultures, like just even with the name, Taido is Japanese and Taekwondo is Korean. So then the Japanese and Korean cultures are quite different. And so you're going to have a, like from the beginning, a, a bit of a cultural difference. Technique wise, Taekwondo is, uh, focuses a lot on kicking. And if you watch like Taekwondo sparring, there's not very much punching, but there's a lot of kicking. And um, they tend to stand up a little bit higher than what we do. So like the Taekwondo stance is a little bit more, instead of low, is a little bit more upright and they hop a lot and they switch a lot when they're sparring. When we spar, we, we don't hop. Actually, what we do is called unsoku. And instead of like hopping to move around, we actually move and switch legs. And we do a lot of this like spinning and turning movement. So when you start watching it, you'll see like a big difference there. And, uh, also, Taekwondo is, uh, has been in the Olympics, and once it went into the Olympics, uh, Taekwondo really went to the sports side. And I totally understand that if you're a big enough martial art to be recognized in the Olympics, that's an amazing co accomplishment. And so the, it's very geared towards like sports. And Taito is a little bit more geared towards like uh, self-defense and like uh, a lot of, there's a lot of character building here. Like these people behind me, they're very good at cleaning toilets because I've been making them clean toilets for, I don't know, four or five years now since they became eligible for black belt. They're very good at mopping the floor. They're very good at cleaning windows. They know how to vacuum. They know how to dust. Um, it's not just like, like my, my son doesn't, when he goes plays in soccer, he doesn't have to pick up the cones. Like I tell him to, because that's good manners. But um, there's just a difference between martial art and sport. 
And so I would say that Taekwondo has really gone towards like Olympic sport and, and Taito is much more like traditional martial art. But I love watching Taekwondo. I don't know if you all have ever seen those guys where they, they'll get like three guys, like a human pyramid and they'll run up the pyramid and then break a board at the top. That's high level stuff, guys. That's, that's not easy to do. And I, I love watching it. I love all martial arts. You don't know, I'm a martial arts junkie, Kung Fu, karate, Taekwondo, I love it all. Um, to continue with the differences, Adriana is wondering what's the difference between Taito and Wushu fighting techniques? Wushu, like Wushu Kung Fu? You know, like Okinawan Karate is very closely related to Kung Fu uh, because that's where it came from. It came from China to Okinawa. And I would say one of the big differences that in Okinawa, they do much less of the animal movements where you, you try to actually make yourself look like the praying mantis or there's like scratching techniques like the tiger style. Um, Okinawan karate kind of like took all of the kicking and punching and uh, kind of left behind a lot of the animal movements. So you don't have nearly as many animal movements in, in Okinawan karate. And, uh, but there's a lot of similarities um, because like I said, o Okinawan karate comes directly from Kung Fu. So there's a lot of similarities and differences. Um, also Kung Fu sometimes, it has more of a religious as aspect to it. Whereas uh, karate, we do a lot of like, you know, formal things, but it's not, not nearly so as religious related because, you know, the traditional practitioners of Kung Fu, are, they're Buddhist monks. And so they have a, it's a little bit more of a religion associated with it too. Thank you. Um, we've got to start wrapping things up, but I have one more question about your school or how does U.S. Taito compare to the other Taito schools around the world? Um, I, I guess the best answer is, uh, in 2018, we went to Japan and one of my top students, his name is, uh, Ethan. He was, um, one of our bright stars here at Taito and incredibly intelligent guy too. He was the valedictorian at his high school. You don't meet so many valedictorians that are like world karate champions, but, um, we went to Japan and uh, Ethan beat their national, he didn't just beat their national champion. He was in a tournament bracket and on, on his side of the tournament bracket were two Japanese national champions, plus some other very high level Japanese fighters. And he went through four matches all the way to the finals and Ethan never got scored on the whole tournament. Not even one time, nobody could touch him. And he beat the other guys convincingly. It, it wasn't even close. So I can go to Japan and match my students up with the best people they have. I could go to Finland or Sweden, match them up with the best students they have. Um, yeah, we were highly, highly competitive against any other karate school in the, any other Taito school in the world. Also, we are the largest Taito school in the world. We have uh, uh, about 400 students here. And so that's the, by far the single largest school in all the world for Taito. <laughs> thank you so much for the for your time today. And thank you for your energetic demonstration. I think everyone really enjoyed that. Thank you again for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Um, if you want your kids to learn how to stand still, I don't know if you've been watching these people behind me. They're not moving. They're 15 year old Americans. They get it. They've been taught well, they get it. If you would like your child to be able to do, to do flips, but also to be totally calm and at ease, bring them to Taito. Thank you very much.